Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Life has been wasted if we do not enter the eye center. Some inspiration today for spiritual seekers looking for the way to the beyond, the kingdom of the heavens, the way that leads to the worlds that are within. The Sufi master Sarmad once said, Oh my friend, choose a corner of seclusion to enjoy the intensity of the beloved's love. Leave all grief and choose tranquility. Do not be scattered like the whirlwind. Center your heart on the beloved and choose peace. The following is from the book of Gyan Deepak, The Light of Gnosis, The Light of Spiritual Understanding by Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. The Lord thoughtfully spoke this word to Darya. Boundless indeed is my Nam, the positive power. Let one hold fast to Nam with one pointed attention. The Lord of Time and Illusion, the negative power, can never go near such a person. Let one merge one's attention into Nam while standing or sitting, and let one direct one's love to the divine inner sight. If one bears the Satguru's imprint, his authentic passport, and his spiritual coin of transaction, one will certainly go across the ocean of the world, this ocean of samsara. Such a one discards the deception of gods and goddesses, and being engaged in the true practice, Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation, is steeped in the Lord's love or bhakti. Giving up delusion, he endearingly holds fast to the beloved, nurturing the true love obtained from the Satguru. While standing or sitting, he thinks of the Lord and remains absorbed in the sound current. He takes shelter under the truth and thus brings call the negative power to defeat. This is a mystic poem of Niloba of Maharashtra titled, This Light. Astonishing, this light, so different. Even with eyes closed, you see it. It was never lit, nor does it ever go out. The luminous soul makes it shine eternally. No color, yet all colors. This light is illumined by life itself. Neela says today, God in his grace used my offering of the lamp of devotion simply as an excuse to let me experience this light. The following is on the monism of Sant Paltu Sahib, another classic Sant of India. Paltu asserts that in reality nothing exists except the Supreme Being. All that we see before us is simply a manifold appearance of the one power that we call God. There is no question of duality or multiplicity. With Paltu, monism is not a philosophical doctrine, but a fact of experience. The mystics actually see with their inner eye the eminence of the Supreme Being. Sant Paltu Sahib. The wave emanates from the ocean and merges back into it. It merges into the ocean, and just so does Maya illusion return into Hari, or God. The Vedas and the Puranas are all in tangles. How can they enlighten the seeker of truth? As fragrance is concealed in the flower, and fire in the wood, as ghee is hidden in the milk and water in the pitcher. So is the formless Lord manifest in the creation, for none else exists. One who speaks of them as two commits a grievous error. O Paltu, there is no difference between the Lord and his manifestation. The wave emanates from the ocean and merges back into it, says 
Tolto Sahib. The body is the true temple of the spirit. Another verse from a classic saint, Saint Pippa Sahib, found in the book Songs of the Saints from the Adi Granth, translated by Nirmal Das. After searching all the world, it was in the body I found all the treasure of the world. Nothing is born, nothing dies, such is Ram's light, such is God's light. What is contained in the universe is also contained in the body. Whatever you seek, you shall find. Pippa says he is primal matter, the true guru, the sat guru, will reveal this. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. The true master gives us the technique to conquer death by making us cross the gates that lead to and beyond it. We are able to return to this physical body at will after traversing these higher planes of existence. We remain alive and remember precisely what we have seen within. The philosopher Plutarch says that at the moment of death, the soul experiences the same impressions and passes through the same process experienced by those who are initiated into the great mysteries. In summary, our soul is the conscious entity that is seated behind and between the eyes, the third eye. As long as we do not die the real death, the death while living, the cycle of our births and deaths will never end. The state of dying while living is attained by faithfully following the Master's instructions, the meditation instructions, and becoming a gurumukh, or ideal devoted disciple, one who has dedicated his life to the Master. One thus attains self-realization and one's mind is in complete accord with the Creator. One who has practiced and experienced death while living knows the Lord and is accepted in his court with honor. Huzur Baba Sawan Singh, speaking of death before dying, or I die daily, meditation is the process for ascending beyond body and mind. And we can catch a glimpse of the heavens in the here and now, while alive. We can take advantage of this golden opportunity of life to reconnect to the kingdom of God while alive. This is not a spiritual practice for ghosts, but for living people, living ones, right here, right now. Excerpt from a satsang by Azur Baba Sawan Singh Ji, given in the 1930s, commenting on a bani or hymn, of Swamiji Maharaj titled Let Us Turn Homeward, O Friend Why Linger in This Foreign Land Hazur Baba Sawan Singh The whole world is engaged in carrying burdens that are not its own Throughout life people trudge along with heavy packs on their backs just like oxen and donkeys It behooves us, therefore, not to waste the gift of precious life in merely working for another, but to do something that will ultimately liberate us from this prison house. The wealth of Nam, the positive power, the divine light and sound alone, we carry with us to the next world. And this we should do in right earnest. Every second should we value, and every moment we should take inventory of our activities in order to know if we are really doing something worthwhile that will help us both here and beyond. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh in Discourses on Sant Mat, the saints tell us, the saints tell humanity 
that above this dark world there are many higher and more beautiful spiritual regions and that everyone in due course of time will rise to those realms. They speak always of the divine music of Nam, the word of God, which their disciples hear and which by its purifying and magnetic power cleanses the minds of the disciples and draws their souls up to the higher domains." Unquote. Passages from Hazura Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur, the famous Gurumuk disciple of Swami Ji Maharaj. Merciful Radhaswami, the Lord of the Soul, was also pleased to declare that whenever anybody is initiated into the Surat Shabad Marga, the way of the attention faculty of the soul merging into the divine light and sound, his contact is immediately established with Sat Purush Radhaswami. Hence, Sat Purush, merciful Radhaswami, would continue to shower his grace on everyone who would sincerely perform the practices to some extent with feelings of love and would not indulge in the evil tendencies of his mind as far as possible, i.e., he would gradually make the mind and spirit of such a devotee ascend higher and higher internally and would protect him from the obstacles put by maya and kal, illusion and the negative power. Also from Hazur Maharaj, if someone's mind is obsessed, is attracted towards some particular worldly affairs or towards some particular person or entertain strong feelings of enmity or grudge against anyone, then also he would have little love in the presence or the holy feet of the Supreme Being, and for this reason his mind will not apply itself to devotional practices, and he will find little pleasure in them. To sum up, therefore, a true satsangi should, as far as possible, detach himself or herself from worldly affairs every day and should increase his love and attachment in the feet of the Supreme Being. The extent to which his mind gets relieved of worldly attachments, his love in the feet of the Supreme Being will increase and the bliss of bhajan and dhyan, meditation including inner sound meditation, will also be felt in a greater degree and he will experience internally greater daya or grace." Unquote. The following is from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. Love enables us to feel a kinship with all life on earth, to feel that all are children of the same benevolent father. All jealousy and otherness disappear from the heart as soon as love comes in. Love is the path of complete self-sacrifice and giving one's heart away. Love is a constant and everlasting pull. A heart in which love has made a permanent abode is no longer subject to the mutations of time. It is free from transmigration. It is always enraptured with the ever-abiding sweetness of love. Love is a bond which can neither be loosened nor severed. Love is the vital sustenance of the world, the life sap of our very existence. It is the foundation of purity and simplicity. Without it, the world would be an abandoned wasteland. It is the vital essence that keeps our life flourishing and prosperous. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. Something similar from a Gurmukh disciple of Hazur Baba Sawan Singh by the name of Baba Somanath. Until you understand the truth, love will not enter your heart. And until the love manifests within you, the Almighty Lord, who is love personified, will not meet you. A friendship is formed when the love of the Lord and the love of the soul become one, both within and without. When your within overflows with love, 
then that loving power will be attracted to you. He will become your friend. The third eye center. The path is within. True discipleship does not start until one has risen above body consciousness, said Kripal Singh. This is something similar from Baba Kehar Singh. When we receive initiation from a saint, practice Nam Simran to retrace our consciousness from toes to the spot behind the eyes, the third eye center. Only then is something accomplished. I've always loved that quote. That's pretty much Sant Mat in a single sentence. Satsang and meditation are the nutrients of our soul. The following is a spiritual discourse by Baba Ram Singh in the lineage of Baba Somanath, Hazur Baba Sawan Singh and Kripal Singh. Satji would often say this, Leave a hundred things and go and attend satsang and leave a thousand things and sit for meditation because this is the true work for which God Almighty has given us this body. All the other things that we are doing, we do for others. So what is the work that we are really doing for ourselves, for which we have been sent into this world? Satsang and meditation are the nutrients of our soul. Satji used to often say, like we give food to the body, it is very important for us to give food and water for the soul. So the satsang that we listen to is the water that we are giving to the soul. And the bhajan simran that we are doing is the food that we are giving to the soul. Here he is saying bhajan simran. Uh, this is referring to the meditation practice, hearing the inner sound following the Techniques of Surat Shabad Yoga, Inner Light and Sound Meditation. These are the food that we are giving to the soul. When we give this food and water, the satsang and the bhajan simran to the soul, the soul becomes stronger and the mind becomes weaker. When we make it a habit of sitting regularly for our meditation, and we make it a habit to listen to satsang every day, then slowly our mind will become weaker and we will be able to spend more time doing our meditation and we will start enjoying that meditation more. So we should make it a part of our schedule, our daily schedule, and we should prioritize our bhajan simran and keep that as the first thing in the schedule. By doing that, our love and affection will grow towards our master and towards Nam and meditation. And we will start more and more enjoying it and doing it. A discourse of Baba Ram Singh. Life has been wasted if we do not enter the eye center, the third eye, the seat of the soul. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. The sum total of these observations is that there is one power and one only, the sound current, which leads us from the eye center to our spiritual home. All other powers, without exception, keep us confined to the material and mental planes, giving us forms according to our actions. If during lifetime entry has been made into the eye center and the sound current, the bell sound, has been grasped, life has been usefully spent. If this has not been done, even though all else has been done and most successfully, then life has been wasted. This done, all is done. This not done, all else is done. Is, is if nothing has been done, such is the finding of Sant Mat, and it is a fact. 
and is not an arbitrary mandate, unquote. Azura Baba Sawan Singh, reaching the eye center, merging with the sound current, is accomplishing something. We must reach the third eye center, and life is wasted if we do not enter the gate to the kingdom of heavens, the kingdom of the heavens, which is the third eye. The third eye is that gate, is that portal to the beyond. Sant Kirpal Singh Ji, come back, my children. We pass the time in ignorance, all the time God is calling you from within. The sound principle, the music of the spheres is coming within you from above. All masters say this. Tulsi Sahib said, Sound is coming from the heavens, calling me back. Shams of Tabriz said, Out of this temple of the body, I am hearing a sound calling me. Come up. The bell is ringing wildly. Come back, my children. Come back, you see. Kripal Singh, And we do not listen. This is how masters see, and this is within you. Light is given to show you which way to go, and the sound directs you where to go. These are the two ways back to God. A passage from Sant Kripal Singh. The term Simran means the mental repetition of sacred names of God. These sacred names of God are revealed by a living master at the time of one's initiation into the meditation practice. Learning the meditation practice, that's what initiation means. It is learning the instruction and sitting down and experiencing the meditation practice. Simran also means remembrance, as in remembering God, remembering one's true identity and where one comes from as a spiritual being before this life and after this life. Remember the true kingdom that we're from and going back to. Remembrance is also another definition of the word Simran. Simran is given so we may purify our mind, Baba Ram Singh. We have to purify our mind and the body will automatically get purified as a result. The masters to bring about this purity have given us Simran and we should do more and more Simran. It is not necessary that we have to sit and do Simran only during meditation. We should do Simran at all times while we are walking, while we are traveling while we are cooking food, or while we are eating food. So, wherever the mind is idle, whenever the mind is idle, we should try and do Simran. With that, the mind starts getting purer. And once the mind becomes purer, the body automatically becomes purer. The soul is always pure. So in that stage, the upward attention automatically starts happening, and the soul starts going up automatically. Baba Ram Singh Ji discussing Simran as not only a meditation technique but the repetition of sacred names of God is something we can do throughout the day, throughout the waking state of consciousness whenever opportunity arises and if we keep at it as, as many of you know who are regular practitioners of Simran it becomes a kind of automatic thing constantly going on in your subconscious you know it's always going on it becomes a permanent state so when you sit down for meditation if you've been doing a lot of Simran throughout the day and that is your custom that is your habit that's the way you you are each day meditation becomes easier it's easier to reach the third eye it's easier for the light to appear it's easier to go within the masters and mystics teach that the path of the masters is not only the name of a book and the name of a school of spirituality, but it is indeed a literal path within that each soul can take, a ladder, a path a tunnel of light and sound traversing the beyond. 
allowing the soul to transition from the world of illusion to reality, from the temporal to the timeless, from this creation to our true eternal spiritual home. It is a literal path, a path not created by human beings. The divine light and sound are not created by human beings, but are created by the Supreme Being. The following is a satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh. The ladder of the sound current connects the soul back to God Almighty. Ever since God has created this whole creation and has created the human body and human form, He has created the path to go back, for the soul to go back and meet God Almighty within the human form. This is not a path created by any Mahatmas. It is a path created by God Almighty Himself. It is a natural law that He has made this. On the same path, saints have gone and met God Almighty with the grace of their masters. And on the same path, we can also go with the grace of our masters and meet God Almighty. There is one sound current emanating from God Almighty coming down, but there are five planes in between. And each plane where the sound current traverses, it makes a different sound. So this ladder of the sound current is there connected within and each step we take, each plane we cross, that same ladder is connected internally. The same sound current gets connected and goes back to God Almighty. It is on the sound current only that the soul rides and goes back to God Almighty, all which are connected within. But to manifest the sound current within, we have to take the help of Simran and Dion, and we have to concentrate our attention. We have to focus our attention from outside within, and that is how we will get to manifest the sound current within. Our mind is scattered in outward worldly thoughts, and it is continuously in the repetition of these thoughts, which are all outwardly drawn, and that is why the mind is also outwardly drawn. By doing the Simran of the Nam given at the time of initiation, we repeat that and the mind starts getting focused and its attention gets focused within. When we sit for meditation, we close our eyes and then we focus our thoughts at the back of the eye center. And our faculty of visualization is also there, which also visualizes the form of the master within. And by doing Simran, we concentrate our attention and focus at the back of the eye center. Then automatically, when we sit for meditation, our attention starts getting focused on the form of the master at the back of the eye center. So the soul is currently situated at the back of the eye center. And therefore, saints say that you start from there. You start focusing there and focus your attention where the soul and the master reside. That is at the back of the eye center. So therefore, we should lovingly focus our attention and do the Simran and the Dion, that is, the contemplation of the form of the master, while doing Simran at the back of the eye center. When we do this lovingly, we also start getting the grace of the master there. A Satsang Discourse by Baba Ram Singh A Glimpse of Inner Light and Sound Meditation The following is from Kripal Singh from the book Spiritual Elixir A Collection of Letters to Initiates from the Meditation Chapter on sound current meditation. Kripal Singh, sit in an unflinching and easy pose, quite relaxed, without any tension in the body. Close your eyes and leave all thoughts of the body below and its environments. 
the breathing process going on in the body and fix your inner gaze into the middle of what you see before you within the space of the two eyebrows and repeat the names mentally very, very slowly, maybe at intervals, so that your inner gaze is not disturbed. The repetition of this word will ward off all evil effects of the negative power within. If you see the light, it will grow brighter and ultimately burst to give you a way further up. If you see the radiant form of the Master, as you saw before, bring the attention fully into his face, so much so that you lose all thoughts of yourself. In this way, you will develop receptivity, and the Master will speak to you. Sit with your ears closed. Simply hear what sounds come from the right side. That sound will draw nearer, grow stronger, and ultimately come from above, and will be heard even without closing the ears during the day. You are not to follow the sound to the place where it comes from, as in that case the sound will grow fainter and gradually die out. You will have more sounds than one, but you have to stick to that of the big bell, a conch, a shell, thunder, drum beat, a violin, and the flute, which are the higher type of sounds, and leave all the rest. A quote about meditation practice, a glimpse into the practice, from the meditation chapter of the book Spiritual Elixir by Kripal Singh, published by Ruhani Satsang. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh once said, As to any exercises which might help you until the time of your initiation, I can only suggest at this time that you may sit in meditation in a quiet place, like your own bedroom or some room, as secluded as possible, with spine and body erect, in a comfortable position. Fix all the attention at the center, just back of the two eyes, and slowly repeat the word Radhaswami, fixing the mind on the Supreme Being, who is your Supreme Father. A quote from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, providing a kind of introductory third eye meditation, or convenient method. In conclusion, wrapping up today's program, Swami Sant Sevi G. Maharaj once said, and this is actually from the last words of Swami Sant Sevi G. Maharaj, Whatever little is possible, do meditation every day, but never give up or discontinue meditation. You will definitely meet with success. And this is from Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad. What is important is to not live a single day in life without practicing meditation. All the experiences of pains and pleasures of the world one has to go through notwithstanding. The last words of Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad. This world is an illusion. Practice meditation. Do not live even a single day without inner meditation. From the last words of Baba Devi Sahib. Thank you for joining me today for this Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today's program is titled, Life Has Been Wasted If We Do Not Enter the Eye Center. Some inspiration today for spiritual seekers looking for the way to the beyond, the kingdom of the heavens, the way that leads to the worlds that are within, to become a worshiper in spirit and truth, to merge back into 
the ocean of love and all consciousness, called by many God, Radhaswami, Anami, the Lord of the Souls.